Ubuntu recently announced that they're planning on moving away from using the GNU core utils and replacing the GNU core utils with this project called UUtils, which is essentially a complete rewrite of the core utils in the Rust programming language. One of the employees at Canonical, someone that is the vice president of engineering, he posted over on the Ubuntu discourse that for an upcoming release of Ubuntu, Ubuntu 2510, so that will be this year in October 2510, uh, which will be an interim release. It's not a long-term support release of Ubuntu, which is great because that's where you want to to push new things when you want to test things out to see if they work or in some cases don't work. That way you can always go back to what you were doing before for, for example, 2604, which is next April, which will be an LTS, but you want to test things out before you get to the LTS. So he writes that, you know, they're wanting to get away from the GNU core utils and try out this new project called UUtils, which again, it's the Rust rewrite of the core utils, uh, also part of UUtils are Rust rewrites of the find utils, which is your find command, XORGS command, the diff utils, which is your diff and uh, compare functions. But the core utils, of course, are the biggie, right? Because that's, you know, your standard GNU core utils, if you're not familiar with what the GNU core utils are, they are all of the really fundamental and important shell utils that you often will use in a terminal. So this would include things like the ls command, the cp command, rm, mv, uh, make deer, uh, all that stuff, touch, cat, TAC, T, uh, <laughs> split, join, shuff, sort, like all of the essential shell utilities, all the basic stuff you do in the terminal, many of that stuff, especially the most common commands you enter, are part of the GNU core utils. And uh, of course, all of the programs, even things that are not terminal programs, all your GUI programs, like when you open a file manager, you know, what do you think that thing is doing? Well, it's running typically a find command or an ls command, and it's displaying graphically, you know, but behind the scenes, it's using a lot of those standard like core utils and find util commands. Also inside your uh, GUI file manager, when you change permissions and change owners of files, well, what is that really doing? Well, all that button that you're pressing, you know, changing permissions, all that's really doing is doing things like chown and chmod, uh, standard GNU core utils commands, right? So mo almost every program you run on a Linux system is using the GNU core utils in some way. So it's a very, very important package. And now Ubuntu, you know, they want to ditch the tried and true GNU core utils that have been around for decades. They have been really the core component. That's why it's called the core utils. It's been like the core component, not just to Linux systems, but pretty much all Unix-like operating systems for the last uh, 30, 40 years years, right? And we're talking about decades. These things have been uh, used on millions and millions and millions of computers and servers around the world, desktop computers. Uh, and now this is very strange because now we're going to ditch something that is totally working. There's no reason to switch away from the GNU core utils over to UUtils. Why? Uh, just because it's written in Rust. I mean, that's essentially what I got from the post here is that uh, this guy, this vice president of engineering, he wants to get away from the old GNU core utils because it's old. He wants something more modern. And by modern, it's all about the language it's written in. He doesn't want the core utils that are written in C. He wants new core utils written in Rust. Now, is there any good reason to do this? And in his post here, he admits that, you know, you're not probably going to see any performance increases as far as, you know, speed. You know, C is a very, very fast language. So is Rust. But there's not really going to be any speed difference in, with these things. You're, you're basically rewriting it to get, what, the same performance? Uh, like, what are you really getting? You're putting in all of this effort to make this change. Um, he mentions that you know Rust, of course, is kind of a safe language as far as memory safe and the way it's written. But the GNU core utils have never been a problem as far as safety either. Like this is this is a solution to a problem that doesn't exist, right? This is you know you're making a change just for the sake of change. And what makes this even stranger is the fact that these UUtils. 
Uh, they're not complete yet, right? It's still kind of beta quality software. Most of the programs that they're working on, these re-implementations of the core utils, are not stable yet, right? They still fail a lot of tests and checks. Uh, you, you can actually go to the UUtils side and you, know, you can you go and see some of what is going on with some compatibility issues. You can see their test and you can see where things just completely fail the test. For example, this is EXPR, that particular core util. They've tested it twice. It failed both tests, right? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, this is, this is dangerous because when you make this switch, you know, there's one thing that we can say without a doubt is going to happen. There is going to be some breakage. You do not switch out a fundamental component of the operating system, and, and there's nothing more fundamental to your GNU slash Linux operating system than the core utils. You can't switch that out for this other thing that is kind of beta quality software. You can't switch it out and expect there to be absolutely no breakage. There is going to be breakage. Guaranteed. Also, you have to take into account the fact that so many scripts are written with the understanding that the core utils, the GNU core utils, are going to be on the system. So many programs are written in a way that they expect that the core utils on the system will be the GNU implementation of those core utils. So it's going to have all the functionality and the flags and options that the GNU core utils have that maybe these alternative utility sets like the UUtils may or may not have. And you often see this. Occasionally I will try out distros that for whatever reason have removed the GNU core utils or you know they uh, use some other uh, core util kind of implementation. For example, one of the most common ones is BusyBox. Most of you guys know BusyBox. BusyBox is the uh, core utils on Alpine Linux, for example, and that is not without issue because you will occasionally try to run scripts or programs that, for whatever reason, you know, BusyBox is not the GNU core utils. Now, to be fair with BusyBox, BusyBox isn't trying to replace the GNU core utils. It wasn't written in such a way as to be exactly the GNU core utils. This is different with UUtils because their stated mission is essentially to be uh, completely 100% fully compatible with the GNU core utils, right? It's uh, basically a drop-in replacement and hopefully it should be seamless, no issue. But here's the thing, how are you going to do that, right? <laughs> like this is so weird because basically we're rewriting something that already exists and already works flawlessly, right? We're going to rewrite it. And again, I just don't understand the purpose of this other than it's written in Rust. That, that's not a good reason. And really, we should explore some of the possible motives because I do think there are possible hidden motives behind uh, Ubuntu wanting to make this switch and, and other distributions along the way maybe wanting to switch away from something like the GNU core utils. One of the things to note is that the Rust language, while it's very popular uh, because of the technology, because of the language itself, it's also quite popular uh, because of you know, the uh, politics behind it. Rust is a very political kind of organization. They take political stances. They take uh, political stances on a lot of social issues and activist kind of issues. Uh, they, they often speak out on social media and they defend their uh, speaking out on political views by saying that tech is always political and should always be political, basically saying that, hey, this, we're more they've actually kind of made the statement that in some ways them speaking out about political issues is more important than, you know, writing the software, right? <laughs> Which is crazy. You guys know how I feel about that when politics takes precedent over software development. Well, you know, Rust is kind of a political organization. I do think that if you support their particular political ideology, you know, some people We'll use that, you know, try to promote that. But again, it's, could this be a politically motivated switch? It could be. I don't know that to be the case, but it's certainly something to consider. I have noticed in recent years, and I'm sure all of you guys have noticed this, here recently there is a big push against Richard Stallman. You know, people don't like Richard Stallman, and they try to trash his legacy even. You know, they try to basically remove him from history like he's not an important figure 
in software and tech in general. Like he's actually one of the most important people in the history of software, right? I think we all know that, but a lot of people don't like Richard Stallman for various reasons, a lot of political reasons as well, you know, because he speaks out a lot on politics and sometimes people that don't agree with his politics have a problem with him. So a lot of people want to cancel Richard Stallman. They want to cancel his organizations, which are the GNU Project and the GNU Core Utils. Right? They want to cancel the Free Software Foundation, which, of course, defines what free software is. We have these political groups that now want to basically get rid of free software or they want to infiltrate the organization and try to redefine what free software is, change it. Right? There is a very... It's a small group, but it's very activist kind of group within free and open source software that want to infiltrate certain organizations. And what they really want to do is they want to fundamentally change everything about free and open source software. They want to change the definition of free software. They want to change the definition of open source software. And they want all of the old guard, all of them gone. You, you see this all the time. Uh, they want they want Stallman gone. They want Linus Torvalds gone. They want Eric S. Raymond out of the picture. Anybody that had anything to do with the uh, Unix days, the old Nick Beard days, all of those old guys, especially, you know, if you're one of that generation, you were much more, uh, shall we say, uh, rational and reasonable with people. You typically got along with people. You were much more inclusive in the community. And for whatever reason, that is not viewed as being a positive these days, right? And, you know, that's, I think, again, some of the politics behind this is the reason that, you know, if you don't like Stallman or GNU or free software, you want the GNU core utils out of the operating system and you want the GPL, the GPL license out of the operating system as well, because you're also getting that with this project. The UUtils not only are a complete rewrite of the core utils in Rust, but they also want to get rid of the GNU licensing. This is not licensed as GPL software. The UUtils is actually licensed under the MIT license, which is a very permissive license. Now, there's nothing wrong with the MIT license necessarily. I mean, you're free to put any license on your software you want. I would never tell anybody what license to put on their software. But when you are an organization like Ubuntu and you're thinking about swapping out, you know, the GNU core utils with U utils, uh, licensing might play an issue. You know, maybe you're trying to get away from having so much GPL software on your operating system. Maybe you much prefer more permissive licenses like the MIT license and the BSD license. But my problems really with all of this, it's not that uh, Ubuntu doesn't have a right to do what they want. For me, I'm not against change. I like change. When Ubuntu swaps the core utils out with the U utils, I'm going to be playing around with Ubuntu because I'm going to, you know, see what's up with all of this, see if it actually works, you know, and if it works as expected, hey, I'm going to be impressed and hell, I might even like it. So I have no problem with change. I mean, free and open source software has always been about change. We change things all the time. We break things all the time, sometimes for no reason. And in this case, I do think this is... This is one of those changes that is a complete change for no real reason. Or if there is a real reason, they're hiding their real reasons. You know, I don't know why these people, these groups just don't tell us the real reasons behind the things they do. Like if this particular individual came out and said, you know what, I'd rather swap out the GNU core utils with another core util implementation like UUtils. And if, if he said it was the reason behind it was because he doesn't like Richard Stallman, he doesn't like GNU as an organization, he doesn't like the free software project, the free software movement, like if he had any kind of political motivations, maybe he doesn't like the GPL licensing of the core util, like if he said any of this stuff, which we discussed on video as possible hidden motives, but if he actually just come out and said that publicly, I respect that. Like, I wouldn't necessarily think it's a good idea, again, to swap out the core utils with something else because there will be breakage, but at least you're honest and upfront about why you're doing it. Right now, this just seems pointless, right? Uh, you're rewriting decades old, stable software, decades old, stable software, and you're doing it just to do it. But again, you know... <laughs> It's their software project, right? The people behind Ubuntu, the people that are in charge and make the decisions, they have every right to do what they want to do. I just think in this case, 
it'll be interesting. Let's just put it that way. If they do end up making this change, and you know, I'm, it's not 100% guaranteed that they will make this change. If they do make this change, there's going to be some interesting times ahead. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, Steve, Cap, Caveman, Darloff, Lee, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace Archer, Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, War, Gentoon, Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode you just watched would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because... Uh, without these guys, I couldn't do what I do. If you like my work, want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, please subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.